Obama flies off from D.C. with blast at his successor Trump. One last lecture as he waves goodbye, Obama flies off from D.C. with blast at his successor, referring to Trump as a comma in the continuing story of building America. Former President Barack Obama got in a final dig at his successor on Friday as he said goodbye to his staff and the nation. Just moments before boarding the same airplane that served him as Air Force One at Joint Base Andrews in Maryland on Friday, Obama told former staffers that their democracy doesn't end with the beginning of the new administration. This is just a, this is just a, little pit stop. This is, a, uh, this is not a period, this is a comma, in the continuing story of building America, he said to laughter, searching for the appropriate words. The Obamas are off to California on Special Air Mission 28000, the military aircraft known as Air Force One when the president's riding on it. They pulled away from Joint Base Andrews, located just outside of Washington, this afternoon as the new president and his wife attended a congressional luncheon. Awaiting them at Andrews were 1,800, mostly former members Obama administration, including Dennis McDonough, Obama's former chief of staff. Valerie Jarrett, a family friend and senior advisor in his administration, Susan Rice, his national security advisor, Neil Eggleston, his White House lawyer, Eric Holder, his first attorney general, Gina McCarthy, the former EPA administrator, Jeff Zients, Obama's national economic council head, Jen Psaki, the departing White House communications director, and Josh Ernest, his final spokesman, accompanied by his two-year-old son. Obama was welcomed with the chant that defined his 2008 candidacy, Yes we can. This has never been about us. It has always been about you, Obama told his staff in the farewell address. And all the amazing things that happened over these ten years are really just a testament to you. The former president told them, You proved the power of hope. His wife, Michelle Obama, became teary-eyed as her husband delivered his parting message to the country and to the people diligently worked to enact his agenda. Networks cut him off five minutes in, split screening with a video feed of President Donald Trump signing his first set of executive orders. Before they did, Obama noted that he and Michelle had been milking this goodbye thing. So it behooves me to be very brief, he said. No, his audience shouted in response. Obama recalled the success of their political movement and how a whole bunch of his would-be staffers were really young. And you decided to believe. And you knocked on doors, and you made phone calls, and you talked to your parents, who didn't know how to pronounce Barack Obama, he said with a grin. And you got to know each other, and you went into communities that maybe you'd never even thought about visiting and met people who, on the surface, seemed completely different than you didn't look like you or talk like you or watch the same TV programs as you. Yet once you started talking to them, it turned out that you had something in common, and it grew, and it built, and people took notice. And throughout, it was infused with a sense of hope, he said. The two-term president who was constitutionally mandated to vacate office at 12 p.m. today said his supporters didn't flock to his candidacy for higher office in 2007 because of blind optimism. It wasn't naivete. It wasn't willful ignorance to all the challenges that America faces. It was hope in the face of difficulty. Hope in the face of uncertainty. You proved the power of hope. And throughout this process, Michelle and I, we've just been your front men and women. We have been the face, sometimes the voice out front on the TV screen and the microphone. But this has never been about us. The former president said he and Michelle could not be prouder of their support staff. I could not be prouder. This has been the privilege of my life, and I know I speak for Michelle, as well, he said. And we look forward to continuing this journey with all of you. And I can't wait to see what you do next. And I promise you I'll be right there with you. He closed his remarks with his signature thank you, everybody, one last time. Yes we did. Yes we can. God bless America, he said, waving to the crowd with each hand. Obama walked over to his wife, 
who was standing on stage behind him, and shook her hand, giving her a kiss on the cheek, too. They left the stage one after another and walked through the airport hangar, the former president stopping for a few hellos and pictures, to the blue and white aircraft that would take them to their next destination, a family vacation. They held hands, climbed the stairs and posed together at the top, putting a happy face on their exit and signing off with a wave. The Obamas came to Andrews from the U.S. Capitol on Executive One, the helicopter that's called Marine One when it carries the president. Hand in hand the Obamas walked to the copter, the newly sworn in president and first lady, Donald and Melania Trump, at their side. They gave former Vice President Joe Biden and his wife Jill Biden hugs and said goodbye to them before getting in. At the top of the steps of the aircraft, the former president turned around to face the photographers and gave another big goodbye wave to the nation, a gesture he made earlier in the day, as well, while he spoke to reporters who covered his historic presidency one last time. Obama and hundreds of other dignitaries, including current and former lawmakers as well as past presidents and vice presidents, watched Friday as Trump and his running mate, Mike Pence, took the oath of office. A few hours earlier, Obama gave a final wave to the reporters who covered his historic presidency as he walked out of the Oval Office for the final time this morning. How's it going, he asked reporters watching his departure. The exiting president told his press pool he was of course feeling nostalgic as he ends his tenure at the White House and gave the American people one last thank you. Obama walked outside the office he occupied for eight years for the last time nearly three hours before he was to turn over power to Trump, who has committed himself to repealing much of Obama's political legacy. He attended to one last bit of business before leaving the historic office, penning a note for his successor, then leaving it in the desk which Trump will sit behind for the first time in several hours. The now former president could be seen putting a white envelope into the right-hand drawer of the Resolute desk, which is made from wood salvaged from a British Navy vessel and handed to then-President Rutherford Hayes in 1880. The note was visible in images taken from outside the Oval Office. In doing so, Obama was following a tradition of providing encouragement for what has been called the toughest job in the world. George H. W. Bush set the standard with a note to Bill Clinton after his own defeat where he said he and the nation were rooting for the former Arkansas governor. Obama has tried to set his own standard for a respectful transfer, refusing to sanction boycotters despite a bitter election, the defeat of his hand-picked successor, and charges of Russian interference. The note, however, is not being disclosed, although previous notes have now been published, including the one Obama was sent by his predecessor George W. Bush. Stepping outside the office, Obama gave a wave while holding a solemn expression on his face, a famed Jasper Johns flag painting visible inside the glass-paneled door. He strode along the colonnade, walking casually along the side of the White House as he prepared to join Michelle Obama and Trump along with incoming First Lady Melania Trump. The Trumps were at the White House for a traditional coffee between the outgoing and incoming First Families. Congratulations, Obama told his successor as the Trumps walked up the steps to the north portico of the White House. You'll get used to the protocol, Obama told them as the four posed for a picture. Melania Trump presented Michelle Obama with a large gift box with the famed flu colors of Tiffany. The store announced this week that had suffered losses, in part due to disruptions at the flagship Fifth Avenue store related to police protection around Trump Tower. When they were done, Obama gently put his hand on Melania Trump's back to guide her inside the historic White House her husband will now occupy. Melania Trump plans to live in New York with her son Barron while he finishes the school year. The Obamas released a final video where they thanked the nation from the bottom of our hearts for the privilege of serving, and spoke of their plans for the future. First, we're gonna take a little break. We're finally gonna get some sleep, and take some time to be with our family, and just be still for a little bit. So we might not be online quite as much as you're used to seeing us, Flotus says. Chiming in to plug their future foundation, POTA says that while it will be located on the south side of Chicago, it will have projects around the world and they need input on first tasks.
It's going to take all of you to make it a reality, Obama says. As I've said many times before, true democracy is a project that's much bigger than any of us. It's bigger than any one person, any one president, any one government. It's a job for all of us. It requires everyday sustained effort from all of us. The work of perfecting our union is never finished. And we look forward to joining you in that effort as fellow citizens. On Obama's Twitter account, the outgoing president posted four tweets vowing to remain involved in public life and thanking the American people for giving him the opportunity to serve them. After their coffee, Trump and Obama were seen leaving the White House at approximately 10.50 a.m. local time. The two men entered a motorcade that transported them to Capitol Hill for inauguration festivities. It was the last time that Obama left the White House as president. Obama's exit was the culmination of a long day of work for hundreds of staffers who embarked on a frantic five-hour sprint to transform the White House into Trump's new home. Only residence staffers were allowed to move items in and out of the White House for security reasons, meaning the White House's carpenters, electricians, and other staffers took on movers' responsibilities for the day. About a hundred people will get the home ready by the time the Trumps arrive, between 3.30 and 5 p.m. This involves moving in the new first family's furniture, but also making sure that they feel right at home, stocking the bathrooms with their favorite brand of toothpaste and the pantry with their preferred snacks. The day actually began at 4 a.m., when permanent staffers and some contractors get ready for work. Kitchen employees will be exempt from moving duties as they will have many mouths to feed on Inauguration Day. Chief Usher Angela Reid has designed this year's game plan. It is her first transition but many White House staffers have gone through a presidential move-in before. Things took an emotional turn at around 8.30 a.m., when the first family said goodbye to the staffers who have assisted them for the past eight years. Staffers were seen removing boxes from the White House on Thursday. A photo of the inside of the presidential residence showed empty picture frames on the wall, indicating that the Obama's pictures have been removed. But staffers typically take care not to make the first family feel unwanted. Items belonging to the incoming president and his relatives might be discreetly stored in areas such as the China Room.